No? You are? This is Jess. Jess is bringing the letters. She's our new floor manager. She was the one that was dancing around the front a few weeks ago. Thank you, Jess. No coffee, but got the letters at least. And no matter what happens when he goes to bed, he always smells twice as bad when he wakes up. That's hubby she's writing it about. Letter number two. We need to be educating and encouraging women to undertake motherhood at younger ages. Mm. And the last letter tonight. It's time to let Joe enjoy his pizza. That's Joe Hockey. And it's time to let the rest of us pursue life without the rampant levels of red tape, regulation and rampant restrictions. All these letters and more. Hopefully I'll get a coffee. The panel will be here in about 20 seconds. Don't go away. Sweet and sour coming your way now. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. How it's Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Lovely to have your company. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half an hour and a terrific load of guests. First up, my mate. First time he's in tonight. Hello, Pete. Hello, Gary. How, How are you, buddy? I'm really well, mate. Welcome to the chair for the first time. Well, thank you very much. It's been a long time coming. I thought it I'd never been. get an invitation. Your, your good wife has been on. She's beat you to the punch. Oh, mate, she's a lot better than me. <laughs> we'll see. The, guests, the, uh, the viewers will tell us anyway. Now, how's your um, career in politics going? Because you are the only person in history, I understand, who's actually sat in the Victorian Parliament and the West Australian Parliament. Apparently so. Apparently so. Uh, it's well. more fun over here in the West, I've got to say. <laughs> because? Um, simply because Western Australia is a much better place to be. That's why I'm here, mate. <laughs> well, I like it. We like it. Do we love we it? Like it goes it. nationally, right? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Victoria is OK. But t I tell you what, people yeah. in Melbourne, Come on over to Perth, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, all the soy's watching now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Carm. Uh, Carmen, I was about to call you. Shall we dance? <laughs> Candice? Underlay, underlay. Underlay, underlay. <laughs> and we, we, actually, we've got a letter about Carmen, but that's coming on another week. You know how oh, I we, 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 we cancelled and then we put back Carmen, Carmen onto the, uh, on arts the agenda? operatic agenda. Carmen is my favourite opera and the only one I can actually sing. Can you actually sing it? Yes. Give us a three second rendition. Right. L'amore is un oiseau rebel. That'll do. Wow. <laughs> we'll invite you I back on I, this show. I hope I didn't bust the microphone, <laughs> wow, I'm sorry. very good. Hey, sound, did you pick that up all right? Good I don't know, probably here. not so much. <laughs> Hello, Al. Hello, Gary. What are you going to sing for us? Oh, I used to sing. What did you used to uh, sing? Jingles and at weddings and cool. stuff. Did you really? Mm. There's, there's not a lot you haven't done. I know, I've done everything. And where have you been? Did you know that song, I've Been Everywhere? Well, uh, I used to sing uh, at karaoke. I still do as a I've Never Been To Me. Oh, I know uh, that song. Not tonight. Well, no, no. But yeah, I've uh, never been to me. Can we have, what about opera? Do you like opera? I love opera. I'd love to sing opera. I reckon I could if I had a go at it. All right. Jono, what are you singing for us tonight? Oh, I think after my effort on the 600th show, I don't think I'll be singing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've seen some of the emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was too much of a diva and trying to keep up with Alex. <laughs> I was doing harmonies and then he started singing harmonies with me instead of keeping his... Yeah. I remember I was there. That was hilarious. <laughs> all right. Great to have you all in. Are you ready for letter one? Yes. Here we go. And Candice, you're on notice. You're Ooh. first up. Dear Mitch and panel, I'm so sick of double standards. Specifically, my husband is completely intolerant of any pets sharing our bed. He's simply not an animal lover and just doesn't like any animal at all. He yells and screams and traumatises both me and the Stiffies, two pups, and he curses about... Uh, about because the, I just said stiffies, didn't I? You staffies. Didn't know, I staffies. 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 Yeah, well, the, it's the bedroom. Right. And he curses about because he doesn't think it's hygienic to have dogs in the bedroom. Well, there's the double standard because I keep these two dog, uh, gorgeous dogs utterly clean in every respect. My husband, on the other hand, comes to bed without washing and often stinks to high heaven of one thing or another. And no matter what happens, when he goes to bed, he always smells twice as bad when he wakes up. I suppose we all do. So what can I do here? These puppies that I keep very clean need a lot of attention and my husband just needs to evolve. 
How do I get him to do that, please? Comes to us from Beth of Nunawading in Victoria. Candace, two issues there. There is. Dogs do not need to be in the bed. They don't need to be in the bed. They're she our loves dogs. them. She wants and them you know there. What? I love animals. Me too. I love dogs. But outside. I'm, well, you know, on tiles. You can have a little bed. Tiles. You can have a little dog bed, specific dog bed inside of, if you want. Plenty of animal and dog lovers Nothing watching this at the I, moment. I love plenty of people who have their pets in bed. Yeah, I love a good dog, but not in my bed. Not in my bed. So I kind of understand where he's coming from. On the other hand, stinky dudes, also not welcome. So. <laughs> Stink. He comes to bed stinking and he complains Stinky dudes about the dog. And dogs, both not welcome in my bed. So Pick the two of them. Evict the two of them. Well, yes, maybe if you compromise and say, okay, I will create a bed for the dogs outside the bedroom if you shower every night before you come to bed. I reckon you'd go for it. Oh, there's a comp is that a compromise, Pete? Oh, I think it is, um, but I'm marvelling at the situation that Beth has created or talks about. I mean, usually us guys, we're told we're going to be sent to the doghouse. <laughs> and we think the doghouse is outside somewhere, in the backyard or somewhere like that. But in She's this case, in. this bloke's bed is the doghouse. <laughs> I can understand why he doesn't want to go there. Fully in agreement with Candice that, for goodness sake, you don't want to be sharing your bed with two dogs. Um, it's just not right. Are you but an then, animal lover? What are you talking to his wife Look, about like that? Look, I don't mind... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind pets in their place, but the bedroom's not their place. You got a pet at home? Um, we don't at the moment. No, we've got three little kids. That's enough. Uh, yes. <laughs> you got a pet at home? No, but we're planning to get one. Yeah. Alex, okay. you got a pet at yes, home? Yes, I've got a Burmese and he sleeps in my bed. No, we're talking about pets. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a Burmese cat and he sleeps in my okay. bed. Cat. And uh, usually between my legs. Cats are clean, Or behind say. my back. Yeah, but you know, um, I just think if you've got a problem with your husband, just get him to sleep in another room. Awesome. She has a problem. God, just she has, a, if she has two stinks, problems. I don't think they're related. He stinks, say, right, have two bedrooms, problem solved. He sleeps in there, and then you can sleep with your dogs, because obviously you love your dogs more, and so why not? Yeah, she's just got on their puppies. Yeah, well, John anyway. Uh, yeah, Beth, look, I, I just think you, you know, I always like the direct approach. you just got to tell your husband, look, nobody likes a smelly pig. And he's, if he's coming to his bedroom stinging to high heavens, that's effectively what, uh, what he is by default. Uh, similarly, I would actually send him out on the couch and say, sleep on the couch until you can learn uh, proper hygiene. Uh, and then, you know, if he doesn't already, make him clean his own sheets and, uh, and maybe he'll change his ways very quickly. But as, uh, as Gary said when he was reading the letter out, uh, just tell him that until he's clean and hygienic uh, and actually smells nice, the only stiffies that will be in the room are in fact the staffies. <laughs> the stiffies and the staffies, yeah, that was, that was huge. All right. <laughs> Who showers before they go to bed and who showers after the, when they wake up in the morning? Oh, no, I, I do both. Do you do both? both. I do yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. expensive yeah. wasting water I, I do both. I do both. Do you I do both. That makes you so dirty. But you wake yourself up, it. you refresh yourself Some, in the morning. And sometimes you dream and you, you know, ooh, what, it's you a running hot dream. What, you a marathon or something? God. It's just a good kickstart. Especially the summer, you sweat so much inside. Sheets are clean. You want to keep them clean. Yeah, but you're not, See, you don't look at that. The three men on the panel. You shower, you shower go to bed, and, you, and you're clean. They sleep and, uh, you're and when clean they wake when you up. go to bed. You're not dirty when you go to bed. Well, you don't know. Men well, are naturally be. dirty. Go to, go Let's just go with so it. So, Beth's it's husband, sweet. if you're listening, if you're watching, remember the three men on this panel, we shower regularly. <laughs> and when we come back, well, we'll be freshly showered. We're going to be talking <laughs> about wim uh, paying women to keep them working and have their eggs frozen. Mm. When we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. Don't go away. I don't have any eggs there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Now, if you'd like to send us a letter and have it discussed by the panel, send it to the address on your screen right now, which is letters at sweetandsour.net.au. Or you can even send us a, uh, a look us a, a, a message on our website, which is there, www.sweetandsour.net.au. You can you send it? You can send us something there. You can give us a like on Facebook, and you can even send us a tweet now. And for every letter that we do read out and discuss on the panel, we're going to send you to the movies. And this week, we're sending you to my old lady, courtesy of the very gorgeous. What's her name? Natalie O'Shea. 
Uh, Natalie from O'Shea NRC now. From NRC, NRC. Formerly Natalie Cameron. Formerly Natalie Cameron and... NRC Communications. Very good. We said that, didn't we? We did. One more time. NRC Communications. NRC Communications. Here we go. What was the movie? My Odd Letter. Starring Maggie Smith. There you go, Nat. There's a plug. Hello, panellists. I'm so angry that corporate giants Apple and Google have congratulated themselves on their oh-so-very progressive new policy to pay for the fees of every female employee who chooses to have her eggs frozen maintained over the years. What a total con. It doesn't help anyone except the corporations. It potentially lures the female into thinking that she can stall motherhood to a future time. Yet the research is not at all encouraging for the pregnancies of older women. And if anything, we need to be educating and encouraging women to undertake motherhood at younger ages than the current Western world average. Surely a much better plan is to provide for positive ideas that celebrate motherhood. Something like daycare facilities for children of female employees. Perhaps the panellists have equally positive alternative suggestions that would also encourage women in the workforce. It comes to us from Maria of DY in New South Wales. And we're going to Alex first. Yep. Yep. Yep, me. Yep. Me. Yep. <laughs> After all this time, you finally know what, what, I, what camera... Did you see that? I dodged that. You did, you did. Volleyball. Yes, I think it's a good idea, actually. Because? Well, because, you know, like, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with about the older mother bit, because what happens is that if you have a child when you're older, then it takes that child longer to grow up and older, and so you'll have someone to look after you when you're in your older age, because usually when you get younger, what? you know, when you have your kids younger, then they usually leave and then you can grow old on your own. Uh-huh. And then they'll just get you to come around and look after their kids. You the know? research coming out now, and this lady alludes to it, is that stalling motherhood to later life is not necessarily a good thing. I know thing. lots of girls that have had It's an babies. economic thing. I know lots of girls that have had their ba their first child in their forties, and so Me you know, too. and they're really happy and everything because it's just different. Today's difference. And daycare, I don't agree with that. Did you read recently about uh, children that go to daycare and grow up um, without manners? They're worse. Did you hear that on the news? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But hang on, these working women are mm -hmm. going to be using daycare. Just because they're postponing it, they're the ones who no, are more inclined. No, when they're inclined. younger, they no. When they're younger, they they'll be building up their career, and then they can get when they get older, then they've got their superannuation and their career and everything. I don't know whether that's the, the model that actually applies here. All right, well, Jono. Yeah, maybe you don't, but I do. I'm sure you do, yes. Jono. Uh, Maria, I think uh, you're coming from DY suits you. Why, why, why? Uh, I actually think this is a fantastic progressive uh, thing that uh, that Google and uh, and Apple are doing. It's the first time I've heard about it. Uh, reading your letter. Uh, I think it's wonderful to encourage, obviously, women in the workforce. People want to have babies later in life. They want to get married later in life. So bet we're living longer now as well, uh, Maria. So we're living longer as well. That's one thing you haven't taken into account as well. So, uh, look, and I also agree, you know, absolutely, I think uh, over time you'll see more uh, progressive policies come into place with childcare and what have you. So, uh, you know, I hate to tell you, but uh, instead of a total con, your, your letter's a little bit total crap at the moment with, with uh, dishing this policy because it's fantastic and we should be very progressive in how we encourage women to think about uh, life and when they have children and we're living longer and all, 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 the, all the more power to them. I think Jono likes this policy. Pete? Well, Gary, Jono might like it, but Maria, I'm with you. And I'll tell you what really worries me. When you see these large corporations telling women to go off and freeze their eggs now and maybe you'll come back to it later, it reminds me of those old sci-fi movies in the 1970s and 1980s where the big global evil corporation controlled every aspect of people's lives. So what's the message they're really sending here? Hey, listen, one day we might like you to have, have children, but we don't want you to do it now. Not on Go our away, time. Yep. freeze them, and then we'll tell you maybe a bit later when you can have kids or not. You know what, I think children is a personal choice and people should be given the right to make that choice when they want it, not when their corporation or their government or their friends tell them they can do it. Some people have kids young, lots of women have kids very, very young, lots of women have kids in their 40s now and many, many others in between in their late 20s, mid 30s. It's a choice they should make with their partner and their family, not a choice that Apple or Google or any other corporation should be making for them. Well, your eggs, eggs are younger then. Your eggs are younger if they take them out and freeze them. They're younger. 
possibly, will Apple and Google give a guarantee of success yeah, if these women freeze the egg now and then come back in 20 years' time and use it again? The rates of um, implant I don't and take know about that. Really? as you get older is... Do you know that? Is that 100%? Yeah. Candice? I'm 28. I must admit I'm definitely feeling the pressure of, um, of fertility and, and, and having children at a, a, in a time frame. 28? You're past it. Sorry. You are <laughs> a kid. You are a <laughs> baby. But, don't but, worry. But I don't know whether my physiology is working correctly because it's untested. So if I do have fertility problems, I would rather know about these things now. early mm. rather than, you know, I'm very career focused. I don't necessarily, for my personal choice, want to get to 35 and have a doctor say to me, you know what, you might have been better off a couple of years ago. I know I definitely want children. But the two issues I have with this are, um, they're going to have access to the eggs. I think it's a good policy in general. They're going to have access to the eggs. What else are they going to have access to medical wise? Are they going to know what quality your eggs are and therefore perhaps factor that into promotion decisions. I think what we really ignore as a society is um, the, the needs of men. The needs of men to have flexible working hours and to contribute as parents as well. It shouldn't all be well, about the motherhood. Cost. They, they, they don't just freeze men's sperm as well, I have to say. Freeze men's sperm as well. To, Not only the eggs, fair. but the sperm as well. I think that's fair. A We're going policy. to continue much, this Candace. discussion with <laughs> conversation <laughs> about red tape and regulation or the over Re uh, regulation of our society. When we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. Don't go away. Whether you like it sweet or sour, tune in because we've got something for every taste. Three years now. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour, dear panellists. We've gone nuts with the red tape and regulations in this country. Joe Hockey finally understood this that we've all known for years, but only once he was confronted with blatant council stupidity when he couldn't eat his restaurant-bought pizza on tables that didn't have approvals for the number of people in his party. We are really stupid for allowing this to get so far out of hand. But how do we wind it back now, especially when the federal government, of which Joe is treasurer, is doing the same thing on so many levels? Now draconian metadata surveillance legislation sold to us as a security measure, as a security measure, even though it hasn't proven to be anywhere else in the world, will, by small extension, also have the effect of trapping the file sharers of music and movies when we really haven't had that debate in any manner on, an, on the national agenda. And I, for one, support the youngsters who are, without question, the file, gener file sharing generation. But Malcolm Turnbull and Joe Hockey want to call the greater file sharing public who do zero harm to anyone illegal video pirates. It's time to let Joe enjoy his pizza and it's time to let the rest of us pursue life without the rampant levels of red tape, regulation and ridiculous restrictions. Where and how do we start? Michael of Whitford's here in WA, this is, I reckon, one of your constituents. <laughs> Certainly is. Whitford's is part of the North Metro. <laughs> it is. John, first up on that one. Yeah, look, obviously, I don't think anybody's going to argue with you. That it's completely ridiculous, the, uh, the, the pizza story there. Um, things like this should be sorted out and will be sorted out over time. But you're, what I... you're, you're mayor of a council. Yes, yes. yes. And you'd, you'd be responsible for a lot yes. of this red tape. The, yeah, and surely, the you, yes. surely you get a lot of small business owners knocking on your door saying, hey, listen, hang on, we've wanted to put some chairs and tables out the front, but you've only allowed us five, and I've got a party of ten that want to come through. How do we get over that? And the restaurant owner, as in this case, is paranoid that he's contravening some act. I'm very pleased to say I've never actually had one complaint on that issue. Not well, one complaint. Um, although, the kids could still come, so hence why I'm saying these things will be sorted out <laughs> in time. And, and if, as long as people want to come to Bassett... What do you do there, though, Janet? What, yep. do you, what do you do when the, the small business owner is yep. confronted with this... Well, obviously, level of legislation. Obviously, sometimes it's inter intertwining. Sometimes it may be a state legislature that, that actually um, compels the, the, the councils to actually enforce something. It may be a council bylaw. So you've got to figure out where, where the issue is coming from, address it, and try and get it sorted out because you just want ridiculous scenarios like this occurring. Nobody wants that regardless of... In, in this of, uh, instance, the chap was yep. uh, scared to be fined. 
because he had inspectors yes, that yeah. would run oh, around. They, look, any, any council that does that are complete buffoons and, and, and absolutely ridiculous and just go to your local me media because if, if any council does have the audacity to fine over something like that, it is just disgraceful. But but on, on the metadata stuff, I don't agree with you. We need this uh, this legislation. The, the world is now entering a very, very dangerous uh, era. You like uh, metadata? Uh, of uh, look, I, I think the legislation. We need to make sure the legislation, uh, and we've got the security there to, to to protect us from terrorists and what have you. And you know, I had this debate just a few weeks ago on the panel, maybe a month or so. Theft is theft, and, and sharing and illegally downloading music and movies uh, is destroying the uh, the entertainment industry. Just, so I have no sympathy. That's just that's just big business. But metadata. Oh, it's, not big business, it's not big business, Gary. It's not big business. I'm surprised you actually <laughs> support me metadata thing because to me it's just legislative Chinese whispers. Oh. You don't see anything except. You know, if you really yeah. want to protect, mm -hmm. let's have a look. I've got a mate who keeps me up to date with all these st stupid um, um, radicals because he w goes and watches these um, tapes that he puts out, these YouTubes and whatever that these people put out. And he said to me the other day, you know, I go to all these things and they're going to see that I look them up. But I look them up because well, I'm so secret. far against Nothing them. secret anyway. Not, nothing secret. Not hmm. Worrying about giving Facebook or Google or Microsoft this metadata, they collect so much more metadata than the Australian Federal Who Police said I'm not could get. But we don't said I'm not seem worried about to it. we don't seem to worry about it. I've used you generically rather than directed personally at you, but we, we don't seem to worry as much about what these corporations that have been collecting metadata now for twenty years on us are doing with it. Um, you sometimes get these special offers from the supermarkets saying hey, we've got these products on sale and they're the five products you've bought in the last week. Um, I think that's just as scary yeah, as me too. the Federal Police protecting me, us. And I agree with John on me, too, me too. All right, oh, Alex, uh, Alex wants a word. Oh, oh, all right, go ahead, ahead, Alex. All right, I'll set, I'll set my watch. Come on. No, well, you know, because it was like... Ugh. So well, you, you miss out now. I love it. No, look, I don't care. If councils are councils. They're always going to do something that you don't want them to do anyway. Hi, I've been living in the same place for 11 years and then people that have been living there longer, we got a letter from that council saying to remove the, the rocks. We had these boulders on the, on the verge. If you do not remove these boulders within a week, you'll be fined $5,000, and if they're not moved, you'll be $500 per day after. So I got up at 6.30 in the morning and I just rolled them into the garden. But they'd been there for over 14 years, and all of a sudden, we get this letter oh saying... Yeah, but who? Like, it, I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. Complain to the mayor. <laughs> Complain to the Complain mayor, Candice. Listen. Yeah. Sometimes councils have too much red tape. Yes, that pizza scenario is ridiculous. Story closed. I think everyone agrees with that. The no. metadata thing. Totally. When it comes to illegal downloads, personally, I don't think this is an issue for government. This is an issue with the business model. If they They're want to get around model. this, I agree. if they want to get around this, the issue is not by legislating because you're just going to get everybody offside. The what they, these big companies need to do, and I work in the entertainment industry, you know, I, I kind of get this stuff to, to an extent. Change the way that you're delivering this content. That's right. Give us Agreed. the content Spot in a on. way that we want to buy it because Apple we have want to buy it. We don't want to be criminals. Yep. But a lot of people feel they are forced into that situation because they want the content, but they do not have the means to pay for the distribution model that is working, particularly when we're getting it six weeks after it's available worldwide. Why would we pay for that? Agree. Okay. Quick yeah, last yeah. word. Please. Well, on that, on that issue about uh, piracy, the reason why people are doing it, because they found a model that actually works for them, and I totally agree with Candice on this. I mean, they promised us, the big entertainment conglomerates promised us after the Napster case, when Metallica took all their fans to court in America, mm. After that case, they promised us they'd fix it. Here we are, I think it's 14 years later, 2000 that and they case still was, haven't, and they still haven't not fixed Not in their it. interest to... We shouldn't have to protect them as legislators. Do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of Alan Treves and Aussie Opticals? Or do you yeah, like I think Michael, um, uh, he's a constituent, yeah. as long as it's not seen as an <laughs> injustice to vote. Of course you do. Do you like him? I like letter two. You like letter two? Letter one. Letter one. Yeah, letter one. Oh, Ooh. all right. Yeah. Letter one. Even there we go. Yeah, coming out to... From, from a smelly husband. Who was a smelly husband? Yeah, she's coming out. We're going to go because we're over time. Thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific crew here. And thanks for having us at home tonight, Australia. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>